So you've got case number four, which is the lady with rheumatoid arthritis. Can you tell me what the joints are that are affected by rheumatoid? Um, mostly the hands and the feet. Okay. And is it bilateral or unilateral? Bilateral. Okay. And are there any other joints affected? Um, the hips, the knees, the spine. Okay. And do you know which part of the spine? Uh, the spine. Okay. Can you tell me what you understand by the term synovitis? Um, synovitis is inflammation of the tendon sheath. Okay. And can you tell me what the classical signs and symptoms of femur synovitis are? Um, pain, swelling, um, and nodules. Okay. Which tendons were affected in the quiller veins, tendon synovitis? Um, abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Okay. And can you show me where they are? They're just there. What concerns do you think Janet would have being given a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis at the age of 25? Um, how it could affect her job, um, whether her children would be affected by it, day to day life. Okay. And can you tell me what inflammation is? Um, the body's defence to a harmful situation. Okay. And can you tell me some of the things that can cause inflammation? Um, if you have an injury, if you sprain a sprain, um, a disease or anything. Okay, can you give an example of a disease? Um, <laughs> okay. Other than rheumatoid arthritis, can you give an example of a disease? Um, what was the last time you were ill? The flu. Is that inflammation? To a degree, there'll be inflammation there as the body tries to get rid of the virus. Okay, can you tell me what the main cardinal signs of inflammation are? Um, pain. Yep. Heat. Yep. Swelling. Yep. Um, redness. Good, you revised that, haven't you? Can you tell me why you get each one of those? Um, you get pain um, due to the body's defence, so it'd be the brain warning not to do the same thing again or Okay. And what about redness? Um, it'd be the excess blood that would be in the area. Okay. Swelling? Um, there'd be um, more, more things coming to the area. What's the thing? Um, Or they be like blood and... Okay. What are the main two, main two types of blood cells? White and red. Okay. And why would you lose function as a result of inflammation? Um, mainly due to pain, so not wanting to move it. Um, but also because of the inflammation, not allowing it to move it in certain ways. Okay, fine. That's the first five minutes done. We're now going to get the model to come in, and I want you to treat the model as though she is the patient, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, Sophie, can you show me the Pisi form, please? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Sophie, I'm your student physio. I'm um, just going to look at your hand and maybe your wrist today, is that alright? No problem. Okay, so if you just turn your hand that way, mm -hmm. so the Pisi form is here. Okay, and can you show me the radial styloid, please? Radial styloid is there. And can you name one thing that attaches to the radial styloid, please? Um, Okay, and can you classify and palpate the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb? Yeah, um, the carpal metacarpal joint is between the carpals um, and the metacarpal of the thumb, which would be the, and it is a saddle joint. Okay, and what movements are possible in that joint? Abduction and adduction. Okay. And can you show me the origin and insertion of extensor digitorum? Um, the origin is the lateral condyle um, and it goes into the tip of the digits. Okay.
Can you be a bit more specific? Can you tell me exactly where? Is it on the palmar side or the dorsal side of its extensor digitorum? Um, it is on the... dorsal side. Okay, and where does it go to? Okay, and what does the muscle do? Extends the wrist. And? Um, what are the joints? The elbow. Does it? No, the fingers. Okay. Okay, can you show me a phalanx test, please? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is put the backs of your hands together, just yeah. like that. And that is testing the carpal tunnel. Okay, and is that a negative or a positive result? Uh, that's a negative result. Why is it negative? Because there's no pain when she's doing it across the carpal tunnel. If there was pain, where would it be? Um, across the top of the carpal bones. And where would she get other symptoms as well? Would um, she get would she get pain in the carpal bones if she was positive for carpal tunnel syndrome? No, just the carpal tunnel. Okay. And down the arm. Okay, where would she get pins and needles? Um, um, down the half of the ring, the middle, and the index finger. Okay, and what would that suggest that Rachel's got? Um, a median nerve problem. And how long would you get her to hold that test for? Um, about a minute. Okay. Okay, can you show me an accession movement now? Can you show me radial deviation grade 2 to the wrist joint, please? Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to turn your hand this way. Um, I'm just going to move the hand slightly into radial deviation. Okay, and what makes it a grade 2? Um, it's a large movement without going into any resistance. And what would you use a grade 2 for? Um, pain relief. Okay. Can you now show me uh, a grade 3 PA to the head of the ulna, please? Yeah. The head of the ulna is here. Um, so just push down. And what makes that a grade 3? Um, it's a large movement going into some resistance. Okay, Sophie, can you show me pulse shortwave to the model's hand? Okay, that's fine. You can assume the treatment's finished now. Okay, we're now on the movement analysis part of the exam. I want you to analyse Rachel pouring a drink into the cup. That's your start position. Rachel, I want you to pour the drink into the cup and then back. That's your finished position. 
You can ask Rachel to repeat this as often as you like. I won't interrupt you unless you need me to, but I want you to tell me how the wrist and radio on the joints are moving and which muscles are doing it, please. Okay. Yeah, can you do it again for me, please? Okay. So, so you're starting, and I'll start with that position as mid prone. Um, okay. So we start in mid prone. Start with slight radial deviation. Um, and neutral for flexion and extension. Okay. Okay, so as you pour the drink, move into pronation of the hand, um, some extension of the wrist, and very slight radial deviation, it's maybe not moved, any radial deviation. Okay. Um, and then as you come back down, um, you go back, you supinate it back into mid prone, um, and you go back to the start position, so neutral flexion extension. Um, but there isn't actually any radial deviation this time. Okay. While the radial deviators are getting shorter, what are the, rea what are the ulnar deviators doing? Okay, and can you tell me what the pronators and supinators are? Um, the pronators are pronator teres and pronator quadratus, and the supinators are supinator and biceps brachii. Okay, and can you tell me why is it that when Rachel grips the bottle that her wrist automatically goes into extension to give her a better grip? Um, Or another way of asking you is why is it that if Rachel bends her wrist down and then tries to grip it won't be as effective? Because of passive insufficiency of the muscles. Passive or active? Active. Thought you said that. <laughs> Tell me what active insufficiency is. Um, I just need to go through a few questions that we didn't ask and then we're done. Okay. So let me check that I've gone through everything. We've gone through the joints affected by rheumatoid, we've talked about synovitis and the signs and symptoms of tenus synovitis, you've talked about the queer veins, you've talked about the concerns of Janet, you've told me about inflammation and the cardinal signs, you've shown me the pisiform and the radial styloid, carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb. One thing I wanted to ask you is what is the carpal that the thumb based on what is the name? Um, scaphoid. Okay. Extensor digitorum you told me about, the valence test you did, pull shortwave, some questions on that. Why would you use pull shortwave on this lady? Um, because there's no risk of any thermal effects. Okay, and what do we think it does? Um, it will reduce the inflammation. Okay, do you know how we think it does that? Um, okay. Um, you told me what a grade two would be. When would you use a grade three and four? On um, to increase range of movement. Okay. And what's the difference between a physiological and an accessory passive movement? Um, a physiological movement is something you can do yourself, like flexion extension, and. Is it a path off, is it? Uh, accessory. Accessory is something that I do, so a glide or uh, ulnar deviation. Okay, thank you. That's done. Thanks.